Oh, what's up there? We've got Orion. It's actually one of the clearer days that we've had here. Uh, it's still horrendous sky glow. But down in the foreground here, I got one of the cheapest tracking telescopes that I could with one of the cheapest telescopes that I could stick on it. Um, and this isn't so much to um, de de debunk the EV scope. Got another telescope going. Uh, this one's for another one called Stellina, which is very similar to so optical performance to this thing. So this is uh, about 4 inches, 100 millimeters there, and it's about f5 in focal length. So it's very good for deep sky. Um, and the Stellina, if I remember, is 80 millimeters, so it, it's not quite as big on the aperture, uh, but it, it's more color corrected. So um, this this telescope here is about ooh, 200 bucks or something in the mount maybe about the same so this is the most bargain basement thing that you can do um and yeah i've got i've got my camera on there this time i've actually got a deep sky filter in there um which basically takes out a load of the orange from the sky glow uh, and um i've just got it looping in 30 second exposures it's uh, fairly windy here and and the mount is not the most solid um, of mounts, so it, I, I, you, you basically just leave it on doing 30 second exposures and after this one's done we'll stop it and take a look at what we have. And then, okay, so we stop that and now, so that's the actual Orion Nebula in the middle there and if we take a look at the pictures that we've been taking uh, actually it's a lot more blue on the screen than it looks uh, so this is the picture that we just took and eh, it's not perfect there are some stars trailing in there but um, yeah you compare this to the EV scope and it's actually pretty decent um, so we can also uh, see how well our tracking has been doing um, yeah, like I was saying, I ended up a one star a line on this, and literally, um, yeah, you know, maybe not even five minutes. So I mean, it's far. The, the, there's some wind here. That's definitely wind, or me walking around or something. This is, um, not quite sure what it is, but okay, that's that's definitely the scope being knocked. Right, so the purple halo around those is because the scope is not uh, uh, not properly color corrected. But okay, right. Actually, that looks super gorgeous. The what I've got here on the camcorder does this no justice at all. But I'm wondering if I come in really close, whether it will uh, sort out its color correction. Yeah, maybe not. Okay, so I'll splice in some of that, and uh, yeah, so this this is much more like one of these automated rigs. Apart from uh, all in, this is probably five hundred dollars, I reckon, and the Stellina, which is right. So um, I've actually got uh, a color corrected version of this, which costs about seven times what this did. So it's about one and a half thousand dollars. And it's, I was really curious to see how the two would compare. And on this, I actually don't think there's going to be a great deal of difference. I mean, um, you know, to the untrained eye, they would probably basically look identical. It's just the stars here are going to have a bit of a purple halo. But I might try that. I'll, I'll try that and I'll stick them both in at the end of this video. So I'm, I'm going to now get the the expensive version of this and try it again. Which was almost exactly when it decided that it was going to cloud in. So unfortunately, that comparison is going to have to come for another day. But this was the first light on uh, one of the cheapest telescopes that you can get. Yeah, okay, cheapest sensible telescopes. It's a couple hundred bucks, that sort of thing. But the reason I want to bring this up is because, of course, now I can compare this directly to first light on the EV scope, where you'll notice 
that the uh, couple of hundred buck telescope is clearly optically superior. You know, judged by the, the quality of the star images to the EV scope, which costs about eh, $3,000. And for those of you who are wondering how this is received by the EV scope backers, well, it's difficult to tell because eh, almost none of them seem to have got their telescopes yet. But backer number 207 is different. He got his unit today and was very pleased. Wi Fi linked to the app, well, a little unstable. Uh, but was able to get some images, uh, great images of Andromeda and M42. Let's hope they're better than the ones I've seen. Um, and he didn't realize that it was actually that that feature that they've got of using the uh, push and hold as a joystick is actually fairly sensible. I've not actually seen that on any of the other apps, but um, uh, does the tripod fit into the backpack? Tight squeeze, yada, yada, yada. Um, ah, this guy's good. I think Thunderfoot is a little obsessed with the EV scope. And, uh, well, I just enjoy you watching these things. You know, people who massively overpromise, crash and burn. So yeah, I've got my popcorn out here and I'm enjoying it, okay? Uh, I think he's now more obsessed now since he's not being acknowledged by Unistella. Ha, 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 ha. Not entirely true. I did actually get contacted by someone, um who was actually uh, an astronomer, a yeah, professional astronomer, well, university type guy. And he said that um, he knew people on the EV scope team and I was being really unfair to them. And really, it wasn't meant as a a, a visualizing platform. At which point I was sort of like, what the hell are you telling me? That's the entire sales pitch. And he was going on about how it can be used for for gathering data on trans-Neptunian objects, at which point you've got to be kidding me. I mean, um, first of all, with the image quality that we were getting earlier, zero chance, right? Zero chance with a telescope set up like that that you're going to be able to get anything useful out of this. And, um, you know, secondly, observing trans-Neptunian objects is the most boring thing ever in that you're going to watch very distant stars, very faint stars, get slightly fainter for a bit, then brighten up again. <laughs> that, that, I'm sure that's what people spent their $3,000 on. Uh, must suck uh, being an attention whore and being ignored by those who you're seeking attention so desperately. Like I said, I've got the popcorn out, dude. I'm enjoying it. Uh, that has to hurt right in the soul. Laugh my ass off. Actually, no, again, I'm, I'm really quite enjoying this. So um, I've ordered now a the cheapest Newtonian I could that is sort of comparable to the EV scope. Again, cost less than $200. Um, and uh, so I'm going to have that, but prime focus at some point so we can do the direct comparison of this with the EV scope. Um I really wonder how this guy hasn't been sued already. Uh, one thing is freedom of speech and another is the right to down defamer business. Well, in order for it to be defamation, it would have to not be true. And one can't but help but wonder that no one has ever, ever actually addressed any of the things that I brought up in my videos. And uh, he's so not obsessed with Thunderfoot that he posted it twice. Good one, a nice super backer. What's the next guy? Uh, spicy Lobster. Has anyone had the issue with their product out of the box? I don't think many have because not many people have got them. And this is the thing. It's all geared up to take pictures and share them on social media. But if you take a look, there is a minuscule dribble of these things coming out on Facebook and Twitter. And they're all basically the same. Um, really... Uh, bottom of the barrel astro photos of bright deep sky objects and this this really does sort of make me wonder about the the longevity of people using these things as tools uh, or or as, for astronomy is okay you've done your nice picture of um the orion nebula and a few of the other bright deep sky objects which you'll mostly have to wait for summer like uh whatever lagoon omega nebula that sort of thing what are you going to do now? I mean, uh, you've taken pictures of all the bright deep sky objects. Um, 
uh, what, what, what now? Anyway, um, has uh, anyone else had an issue with their product out of the box? I was following the quick setup instructions when I got the part about moving your scope with the app. It started making an excited R2-D2 shaking and making noises, but not actually moving. It can move horizontally now, uh, but it turns, off, uh, turns on, it shakes and squeaks. Any workarounds, or am I the lucky one? Um, and... Uh, yeah, okay. A collaborator, I recommend you contact user support. So this is also, by the way, um, you'll find that cropping up again and again in the reviews for the app is, yeah, contact user support. Because this is the problem. If, uh, oh yeah, with a completely integrated package like this, it either all works or nothing works. Problem with the alignment, the whole thing's uh, the whole thing's useless. Problem with the detector, whole thing's useless. Problem with the collimation, yeah, it's, it, 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 it's going to be effectively useless and so forth. Um, and yeah, he's tried doing stuff. It's really disappointing. Um, and you will find that back uh, 579 here in Australia, and the silence is deafening, and this guy is by far not alone. Any updates on delivering the UK? Thank you so much for the information you give us. Um, back uh, 1,244 here in Australia, no emails, uh, no backpack offers, right? So they were trying to sell the backpacks hard for three hundred bloody dollars for a backpack, um, and I guess yeah, just just to prove the point that you know don't hold your breath. Um, there was one of these updates that was season greetings. Here we go. Here's one that's not all uh, backers only, and if you come down to the comments on this, you'll find. Uh, that people are getting momentarily excited to find out, nah, it's just another offer to buy the backpack. Um, not trying to be pushy, it's been two weeks and I still haven't heard anything. Yada, yada, yada. Apologize, apologies. Um, yeah, uh, it's so hard being ass. Um, backer, 59. Um, no delivery. When will the next batch of shipping be? Back at 374. Um, but couldn't install the app on his, his Galaxy. I'm contributor 58, and I'm not one of those who's going to get his EV scope first. I don't find it logical. Um, and somewhere there's someone who says they're back at number four. Um, He's back of 58, and he's worrying about it in French. Here we go. <laughs> Will you be delivering on the early adopters first? I was 268. I would expect to receive my new scope shortly. Uh, Kevin Smith, one month ago. Don't hold your breath. I'm back in number four and have heard nothing. So, yeah, there is an absolute dribble of, of telescopes coming out of these guys. And as you've seen, the pictures are... Mm, less than stellar. Anyway, uh, so hope you enjoyed that. Um, that was first light on. Uh, well, I, I'm I just actually kind of enjoying this benchmarking uh, cheap versus uh, more expensive telescopes. Is is it worth spending that extra money? Um, and I can tell you this from just eyeballing um, stuff for the deep sky. Um, I don't think there's going to be a great deal of difference between the cheap and the expensive refractors, uh, you know, to the untrained eye. You're going to get a purple halo around the brighter stars. That's basically it. Um, and the optical quality is also not there. I, I've looked at the moon through both of these telescopes. And for the brighter objects, uh, you certainly get the, the purple halo on uh, the brighter objects, which... Um, yeah, this this is a problem with the refractors, not so much of a problem with the telescopes with mirrors, which is why I've ordered one of these little Newtonian guys to do a direct comparison uh, with the UV scope. So, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up, and uh, see you next time.